it is time to start our Genshin playable character complete tier list. Now this goes all the way up to this goes all the way up to next patch, patch 3.4. So this will be outdated in like two months, <laughs> but hey, might as well do it now. And we can we can obviously change this as things go on. Full disclaimer: I have not been caught up with the story, so. There's a lot of characters I have not fully understood or comprehend, and I also started the game late, so there's a lot of story stuff that I also just don't know about. I started the game July 2021, I believe? Yeah, July 2021. So I missed the first like half of the year of Genshin, so there's a lot I don't know about the earlier characters, and that's okay. And I'm also AR-45, so there's a lot of lore that I don't know, and yeah, there's just a lot of things I don't know. I have not also played most of these characters. I've only played like a little less than half of them. I'm not exactly a big spender. So please take that into consideration, and I'm not judging them solely based on looks or, like I'm not basing them off of like one thing. I'm basing them off of everything as a whole. I'm basing them completely off of just my general opinion. So take that into consideration. And like, I'm not exactly a meta person or a lore person. I'm just kind of playing the game for fun. That's what it's gonna be. It's mostly just gonna be for good old fun. Now, right off the bat, there's a few people I immediately need to crown at the top and at the bottom. First, we must obviously create. The one thing we must do is construct the sucrose tier. At the start, I must create a sucrose tier. And yes, please feel free to, please feel free to argue, state your case, discuss everything in the comments below as well. So yes, we have sucrose tier at the top and we have the child tor tortellini to tier at the bottom. Well, so why do I like sucrose the most? Well, she really carried me early game when I first started game, really. She was like my third four star after Bennett and Noel. And her swirl powers were life-saving for me. She really helped me be able to actually clear parts of the game. But so these two characters, they always seem very similar to me. So this is Sucrose on the left and Pandoria from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Another great game that I should probably play at some point, but she seems so familiar, like their designs are very, very similar. I immediately resonated with that as someone who loves Xenoblade 2, even though I should really actually play that game instead of just watch videos about it. But she instantly felt familiar to me and I really liked using her in game because of it. And she was just very useful all around. And I don't know, I don't know. She's just, she's just such a nice sweetie, like nothing can go wrong with her. And she, very very smart in game and there's so much we don't know about her it just makes me really happy when she does get to be part of the game and she is just a really good unit animal units are very good so that is the main reason why i wanted to make sucrose at the top she kind of just became my main person as i watched other people play the game i was like hey why don't we use sucrose here because it's like God, da, 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 da. and it just kind of just became my brand like uh just use sucrose at it now let's talk about this guy right here let's talk about this kid child why do i not like this guy well child to me feels like a frat boy like a really rude frat boy like he exuberates that energy from his voice and a lot of that is because his his voice actor is really good but I don't, I don't know, he just always like gives me the icks. Like ever since his first introduction, I was like, I don't like this guy. And literally the whole time, like Lumine and Paimon were conversing with him and he was like, oh, I'm a, I'm the 87th member of the Fatui Harbingers. I was like, why are you talking to him? Please fight him at all times. And it just made me very uncomfortable that we are just being like buddy buddies with this literal like, killer of multiple people <laughs> it just made me very off and the fact that you could just play with him immediately that and he was like hey look at this guy see he likes to fish he has a kid it's like he just really makes me uncomfortable and i could totally imagine this guy doing like actually bad things in like a fraternity or like doing like hazing or stuff like that i don't know he always gave me the icks that's why child has his own peer own tier right here at the bottom because 
Th that, that's who he is in my mind. The closer to the left they are, the more higher they are to the top, and the farther to the top left they are, the farther they are. So that's how it's gonna go. But I'm gonna go with Mr. Albedo right here. Albedo, uh, I don't really care about him that much. So I went through this whole story event, but I missed the second one with like the snow one with like Eula and Bennett. So I don't know his whole story. I have some ideas of what his story is from what I've heard. And it's very complicated. And I bet like in like eight years from now, he's gonna be this very important character. The, but right now he's just like, I'm, I'm just a big nerd who talks a lot about various things. And I spend all my dialogue just going over it over and over and over and over. And it just, he's just boring for me personally. And I'm, I'm also a little mad that you can't even get his like good weapon anymore because it was in like the beginning of the game. So that also just sours me a little bit. So even if I did want to use him, I would either have to spend a lot of money to get the best weapon he could have or just wallow in knowing that my that my geo nerd will always be subpar so he'll he'll be he'll be down here for now like i do like his fashionable hair and honestly his voice was not what i expected him to be and i don't know he'll he'll go down here for now maybe things will change for him and i know there will be lore there's lore stuff that makes him much more important but right now he's just he's just kind of there he's just kind of there um aloy um Technically, not a Genshin character. The main reason she is down here is she is not good. If she was usable, if she, if I could find a good use for her, she would be much higher, like up here. Right now, it, she's not fun to use. I mean, she's cool to use, like as a concept, but the game is not like built around her. And man, I would love more like collaboration characters. But if they're not good, then what's the point of even having them in the game? If they're not even fun to use, if they're not even usable. I also have not played um, Horizon Dawn at all. So obviously this is not her as a game in general. She goes at the bottom right here. And I believe Amber will also go. I like Am a little bit less than Amber though. But we all know Amber. She's the first one you get. Firebow user, got a little bear and bunny. And she sounds like Dora the Explorer 24 seven. Hello, hello traveler. The, the main reason why her voice is a little too upbeat for me. And that just also just rubs me the wrong way. She sounds very like Dora the Explorer-esque. And she sounds, she enunciates every word so slowly because she's just so excited about everything she says. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. She, she also just isn't good. I wish she was more usable. And by the way, when I say good, I don't mean like top tier. I mean just like usable enough to be used in other teams. I don't like need like the top 1% of damage because I don't deal a lot of damage in my games. I deal nothing. But I just want them to be like to like hold up without having to run through several hoops in order to make them broken and all that. Yeah, Amber's down there. Like, like she's nice, but Nah, that, that's about it. She helps with my commissions though. As a first player, if she was just a little stronger and a little less like Dora the explorer -y, she'd be a little higher. Ayaka, uh, what? She's, she's definitely up there. I think I'll put her in S for now because honestly, like when I first got Ayaka, like I originally wanted Ayaka mainly because She's useful, I liked her ice bridge thing. But when I first got her, she was underwhelming for a very, very long time. Until I finally like put in the money and time and actually like make a good artifact set for her. But nowadays she like, she can hold her own pretty well. As a character though, she's kind of like there. <laughs> like there's probably more to her in like the Lorne stuff, but as a character, she's like, oh, I'm just, a, I'm just an ice princess. Oh, I wish I could be like all the other people out there. She's nice. She, she's like a student in a school, like a pleasure to work with, a pleasure to have in class. Not offensive at all. She she does the job done and she's helped me get out of many sticky situations. Yeah, she, she is a good character. She's a good character. Not like top tier character, but she, she's a fun character. Go Barbara, go. Should, could she go in B or should she go in A? I'm, I'm a little unsure about Barbara personally. I mean, for the longest time, I think she'll go like just in the middle. So she's probably gonna be a lot in the middle but barbara was my only um hydro character for the longest time because i could, literally could not get any other hydro characters like i didn't get sing show until like last lantern right because i literally had no other hydro characters 
So literally, whenever I had to go to the um, pyro plant, the pyro regifying, it was like, well, better bring out my Barbara, because that's the only way I could do like reliable hydro damage for a very, very long time. I mean, now now I've got Sing Chill, so it's better. But even now, I still didn't have many other others besides them. Barbara's gotten me through a lot of things. As a healer, she has helped save my rear in multiple situations. So she, she's a good one for that. She's helped me a lot there. So like, she's nice. We don't see her too much in stories because she's just kind of stuck in the Mondstadt church. But yeah, she does a good job. Beido, hmm, Beido, where was I thinking? Either here or here. I don't quite remember. Pro probably in the middle again. Like Beido as a character, seems like super cool, like this radical pirate. She reminds me a lot of um, Risky Boots. Like she has the same kind of energy to her, like very like radical stuff. And I don't know why it's not popping up in the middle, but she reminds me a lot of Risky Boots in that way. Oh, I probably shouldn't go that far down, but she has that same kind of like strong, confident pirate energy. The only thing is we don't actually see her do most of, much of it. Maybe because I missed a bunch of events. And I, again, I do wish she was a little bit stronger. Like she is pretty strong from what I know, but I have so many Electro guys. Like I also don't need too many of them, but she, she does a lot of things too. The main thing I know about her is pirate, hangs out with Ningguan too much, probably dating and all that. But next, we've, we gotta go with our boy Bennett. We all know Bennett's at the top, but Bennett has basically saved me like 99% of the time in all situations. He has healed, he has powered me up. He's the only reason my team can deal actual damage. So he, he just, he already just gets a spot at the top. Anyway, Bennett here is, anyone who plays Genshin for a long time knows Bennett is like one of, if not the best characters in the game. And as the second four star I ever got, he shows that. Like he has been like my main man, like for, 80% of the time. I feel like now I'm trying to move away from him just so I can use some other characters because I've been using them for so long. If you have been noticed in Genshin, I have been switching my teams a little bit to use other characters. Like I've been trying to use Yanfei and Jeanling more. Bennett's so good. He'll always sit there and he'll always be my backup in case I need to bring out the heavy hitters. Like he's usually there for all my domains that require like actual strategy and thought. Chongi. Another, another four star I got very early on in my Genshin life. We'll go right here. <laughs> Not the best, because I mean, he has helped me a lot early on when I didn't have many other options. He did really help with infusing cryo on stuff, but that's about it. He's a nice ice guy, very chill and related to Shenha, which is her own story. But after that, like, after I pretty much got Ganyu, after I got Rosaria, like I did not have a use for him at all. Like maybe in the future, once he gets, maybe when like infusion weapons is much more useful, he'll have a higher use. But right now he's just kind of there, this popsicle boy just chilling in the back. And honestly, he is kind of forgettable in my opinion. And the only reason people remember him is because he's related to Singcho. Like that's like the main reason he's still around, but I don't know, you could probably remove him and I'd probably forget about him. D. Luke, Mr. Batman himself, down at the bottom. <laughs> okay, okay, like I get it. He's supposed to be Batman, but for the longest time, he just doesn't feel fun to be with. Like I know in the recent event where he got his like very feminine haircut and his new outfit, he was much more nicer. But at the beginning, it's like, he just always feels like he doesn't want to be with you right now. And that's not appealing to me as a personal character. Like I know some some people love just a brooding bad guy type. Like, ugh, I don't want to be here. I know some people like fall head over heels for that, but me? Nah, I like my characters emotionally available. That's like, that's like my tagline. Emotionally available characters. Yes, please. Still looks down at the bottom for me. Like I get, and I know 100% he's gonna be like this very important lore character like 10 years from now. But right now, he's like, eh, he'll, he'll just hang down there. Do your emotionally unavailable brooding and coffee doing right there and wine. Speaking of wine, I'm gonna bring Diona right down here. <laughs> so I don't have Diona yet. I have met her in two occasions. Once with the Mondstadt event a few months ago and the other with the card game event. And she just feels mean. Like, 
and her backstory, her storyline seems so complicated to put into words. So she is a cat girl that despises the wine industry and wants to take down the wine industry by working in wine. That is like a whole paragraph to explain this one character. <laughs> like, how, how do you like put that? And you think it's gonna be so like important and it's really like, I have not even heard about this storyline because I haven't even gone through her character quest. It sounds like very elaborate, but I'm like, why is she here? And why is she so small? Why is she a child? That, that is, that's another reason. Why is she so small? All right, that's another thing. I'm not a big fan of the child types in this game. Like in this game of like tall, like super mature looking, cool, like adult characters, like having actual children that are like tiny feels off. And especially how they're dressed sometimes. It feel, feels a little baity. I mean, I know that's a style, the lolly style, but that, that's creepy to me. So yeah, she, she'll go down here. I do like her attitude sometimes, but 99% of the time, I'm not a fan. Uh, Eula though, I love Eula. I love her design. When I was first looking for the Genshin characters, like at the beginning, I was like, I like her. She seems awesome. Like her design looks cool as heck, pun intended. Super strong, literally one of the best damage dealers in the game. Doesn't even need elements for it. She was my second five star I rolled. Well, technically third if you count Jean, but the second like special five star I rolled. And she really like held on for a long time. And if I need her, I can still bring her out if I need to. Cause she just does raw damage with her giant fish. Like her actual storyline is interesting. I I felt like it was a parallel to like growing up with like a disability because her way of speaking and her insistence on vengeance the whole time reminds me of someone maybe stims a lot in speaking and always says like the same things over and over. And I I kind of see her as some as a character like that, where she has trouble getting along with people normally. So she always has to speak in her, ah, vengeance only mine and her high class stuff. And I kind of see that as her having like a little bit of like some sort of disability or some sort of way that her brain is wired differently than others. And I don't know, as someone who's worked with and has lived with people like this, I don't know, I, I kind of see it as representation. I know like 99% of the time that was not the intention, but that's just how I interpret it. Yanfei is next. And honestly, I love Yanfei a lot because she's another character who I love the design of. She seems so like magical and whimsical. And then her actual character is like, I am the law. Boom, boom. <laughs> it's like, it's such like a whiplash. I love Yanfei. She is very fun and I wish I probably haven't built her strong enough yet because she is a little lacking in the power department, but I love her character, how she's literally just a law. She's literally just like, I am a lawyer, but I'm also a child. <laughs> and I just, I also just really like her voice. It's more distinct and more like real as opposed to this more like magical anime-esque voice acting. Like, I don't know, I can imagine actually meeting someone who sounds like her. Overall, I love Yanfei. She's great, great character, has helped me quite a bit and pr pretty useful. And I just love her design a lot. Fischl, nope. Oh wait, this is Jean. <laughs> Fischl, it goes right at the bottom. <laughs> now I know in the past, Fischl was like one of the best characters in the game for a long time, but and people kept hyping her up as, oh, Fischl, oh, she's so strong. Oh, she's helpful in Electro. She does so much damage. And the first time I actually met her in the event, in like the summer event, she just started talking and talking and talking and talking and she would not shut up. And then, and then, um, Oz would eventually like sum it up, but that takes more time and it takes so much to get the simplest of answers out of her. And she just wastes so much time. It's like, uh, like I get it. I get your, what they're going for here with like this person, but she's like, uh, I'm not a fan of her. And I, again, I have not used her in battle much. And I really, when I have tried to use her, I don't know how the heck you're supposed to use her. Like, you do this thing and then Oz goes around, but you do another thing and Oz is there. Like, I don't know how the heck you're supposed to actually use her reliably. Fischl goes right at the bottom. I'm sorry for the Fischl lovers out there. Just, she's just not my character. I think we're gonna go with Jean next. Honestly, Jean, I don't really have much of an opinion of her. Like, honestly, like they, 
they built her up early game as this incredible figure who saves the world, saves Monsa all the time. But really, she just doesn't do much. Like, unless you actually go into Monsa, but like, I don't know. She, she just kind of there. Like, she's on all the promo art and one of the first five stars you see. I don't see her enough to have, like, have an impression on her. Like, I know she's related to Barbara, but I like Barbara more than her. I, I don't know. I just don't know enough about her to have, like, a strong opinion. And, like, yeah, she's a busybody, but that, that that's it. Again, I probably should have used her. Like, maybe using her as, like, a healer would be useful, but I just don't have much of a use for her, really. So, she, she goes down there. Ganyu. We all love Ganyu. Very, very high up. Literally, Ms. DPS, one of the strong, probably the strongest you in the game. Once I got her, like literally, like I, she's been always my, on like my, in, in my pocket, just in case I need to pull out the Ganyu button to just destroy everything else. Like very strong, very tired, honestly. Yeah, she just helps out. She has literally saved me in so many situations in the past and still does, to be honest. Um, as like a design, she's okay. Like I honestly kept forgetting like, uh, who, who's Ganyu again for the longest time? But yeah, she literally was like the top, top tier, the cream of the crop for the longest time. And yeah, she is just really still very useful today. And I still use her in a lot of teams. Her dynamic with her and Cloud Retainer is very fun. And I do, I do like her story pretty well. It's very, very nice. She's a, she's a nice little sweetie secretary person. Oh, wait, that's someone else. Goro! Um, somewhere around here. I guess I'll put him like here for now. And I maybe higher, maybe not. I don't know. I guess, I guess I'll put him there. Goro! Sounds cool. He sounds pretty neat in my opinion. Like, he sounds, like, diverse, but he really isn't. He's just, like, a fox cat person guy. And, yeah, <laughs> that's about it. He does geo damage. Really just useful for geo teams. And that's it. Th th that's all he really does. He's a fox guy. I mean, I do like how he's besties with Kokomi. But that that's about it. He's just... His design looks cool. He's got a tail. But he's only useful in Geo teams. And you know how many Geo units I have? Three. <laughs> and none of them are named Ito. <laughs> so he's, he's there. Like, I, I, I get it. I respect him. I respect him as a character. I don't know. Maybe once I do his hangouts, I'll fall in love with him more. Hu Tao. All right. This is going to get a lot of people angry at me. <laughs> I am not a big fan of Hu Tao. Yes, shocker. Sound the alarms, everyone. Oh, oh no, people are knocking at my door. Yes, I am not a big Hu Tao person. Like, I, let me talk about positives. She reminds me a lot of Chandelure, the Pokemon, which I think is cool. And it relates to her power level of literally being one of the strongest units in the game, if not the strongest. Her hair is nice. Yeah, that, that, okay, that, that's about all the positive things I can think of. She is scary. Like, her dialogue, her idol dialogue is creeping me out, man. Like, I get she's supposed to be, like, this funeral director, but it's just, it's, it's a, just, I don't know, feels weird to be playing as, like, a funeral director, which is such a, such a, like, um, sacred topic for a lot of people. But I just, I just don't. Like, I know she's, like, super strong, but I don't get the appeal. Like, there's so many other, like, nicer girl characters. But Hu Tao's just kind of there. I know Hu Tao is super, super, super duper strong. But, yeah, I'm just not a big fan, personally. I also just haven't used her at all. But, I don't know. It's mainly her idol, like, Hilitro song. That's what, like, like I people were memeing about all the time. But once I heard it, like, in-game, I was like, nope. To the bottom. Ito! Everyone loves Ito. Like, we all love Ito here. He's literally, like, like, when I first heard, like, before I got met him in game, I was like, oh, it's just, like, a big himbo guy. That's cool. That That's funny. And then when I actually met him in the Inazuma Festival, I was like, okay, now I understand. Ito is just really, really great. Like, the big, big, big reason for why I love Ito is he actually talks like a human being. Like, if you know this, like every other character kind of talks anime-y. Like, they talk like kind of slow in order to make people like be able to understand them. Whereas Ito just kind of just talks like 
at a normal speed, like as a relatable person. And again, a lot of it is Max Middleton, Middleman. Like he's also Ryuji in Persona 5, who is also very fun. But yeah, Ito is just a fun character who actually, he's just fun, funny, pretty use usable as what I've heard. And he just sounds cool. Like, I didn't think that, like, when I first saw him, I didn't think he'd be at the top, but he is, like, at the top, man. He's just a fun character. And Genshin Impact, Mihoyo loves him, too. Like, he's in everything now. And I guess he does sell. He does sell stuff, but yeah, he's in, like, every event. Like, at this point, just put him on the permanent banner. <laughs> Why not? He really just does it all. Let's see, Kaya. Everyone, everyone loves Kaya. Uh, Kaya's just kind of dear for me, I guess. I mean, Kaya probably will be very, very important farther into the game's life cycle. But right now, he's just kind of there. Like, he is probably the best out of the initial starting characters. But I haven't put in the time to actually put in time to work for him. Kaya's good. He's fine. Like, I know, like, people, like, thirst hard over this guy. Because, yeah, just full chest out man. Which, which is fine. I do wish, like... He wasn't like treated as like, I don't know, like a racist attack sometimes. Some people go after him because of his darker skin. They're like, please, we just need some, t we just need some more representation in this game. Uh, anything else to say about Kaya? I mean, he's, he's what he is. I mean, once we learn more about him, like canonically and not in like a batrillion different tiny small like details he'll he'll be much more much more interesting tazuha right up there now for the longest time i was not a big he was all right for me like uh pretty poetry man pretty poetry boy pretty cute but once i actually started using him and once i got him to c2 he just like destroys everything in sight he's literally might be like my top used character now because he literally like makes the game so much easier like he's legit help he was legit the catalyst that means not even the catalyst joke joke but he literally got was the difference between me being not able to do artifact domains to being able to do artifact domains like he has legit been that helpful for me like he really like broke the boundary between like, oh, I'm kind of doing this game. But now I can actually like do the bulk of this game. He has helped save me so much. And I honestly love him a lot for it. Like his story is pretty nice. His character design looks fabulous. And yeah, he's just very good. Like kind of makes me feel sad that I haven't been using Sucrose as much, but he has helped save me in so many situations. And I thank him for that. Fischl right here where you belong the thing about Fischl is i keep forgetting who she is like for the longest time i or not even official um ka-ching that's not even ka-ching ka ka-ching ka-ching see i've already forgotten about her i literally always forget about her all the dang time I have confused her with Ganyu for the longest time because they, I literally don't know why she's there. She doesn't need to be there. I feel like Ganyu and Kaching could just be the same character. And I don't, I don't get why Kaching's there. Like, why is she there? Why do people love her so much? Like I get, oh, she's got Sailor Moon hair. That's cute. But other than that, why is she there? She's usable in some teams, but why isn't she stronger? She's just there. Like, I, I just don't know. I don't know. I also don't really. I guess I did actually get her by accident once, but I just don't. I just don't see the appeal to her. She just feels like a waste of a five star. And I'm just not a big fan of Kaching. Kachow. Her, her name's also hard to say. Is it Kaching or Kaching? I think it's Kaching. Yeah, she's just not up there for me. So right down there. Klee. Also down here. Uh, where where can I put put her though? I think I'm gonna put her right. Oh my god right here okay if you asked me like a week ago Klee would probably be at the bottom but after listening to some of her voice clips she, she she's went up there a little bit not a lot first off she's a child and she acts like a child and it feels weird having other characters having to take care of an actual child that you can play as second 
people always talk about how she is like this destruction of horror goddess person who has blown up multiple mountains. And when you actually play as her, she does awful damage. It's almost like a joke. It feels so rude. Why would you do this and make her so weak? Like if she was like broken as heck, I mean, heck yeah, she's awesome. But when you actually play as her, she seems like such a waste. She has this mom that's super important that we know nothing about. And she's like the only person of like an actual like mother relationship for goodness sakes. But yeah, I just not a fan of Klee. People have been hyping her up for eons. But when I actually play as her, it's like, that's it. She looks nice, but it feels weird because I know there's so many people who to like look at her in very scary ways, very lustful ways. Ugh. So I am not a fan of Klee. She really doesn't need to be in this game. She goes down there. Kokomi can be. Mm, I'm gonna put her a little down here. So Kokomi, like for the longest time, people used to not know how to use her. So many fire people in C. Yeah, that is weird. Why are so many fire people in C? That is interesting. Maybe I just don't like Pyro that much. I mean, hey, Bennett and Yanfei are up here though. Uh, what did I say? Well, yeah, Kokomi. Koke like for the longest time, Kokomi was considered the worst five star in the game. Like she literally had awful sales. Now that she has like a good artifact, she is literally one of the best. But I still, because of all of that negative reinforcement, I still don't like her that much. Like as like this literal like war veteran, war strategizer, you'd think she'd be like super metal and super hardcore. But like you don't see most of, much of that in the actual game. Probably because the war, quote unquote, is so short. So I don't really get it. Like she's just like super nice looking character. That's like this hardcore like veteran who's like super important and official. But she's just kind of like, oh, I'm a little fish. I'm a fish. I'm a cute fish. And it's, 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 it's just a, it's just doesn't fit right to me. Like I like her as a healer, and like I actually like playing as her. It would be nice to maybe get her someday. But she's. Definitely not on like my to get list anytime soon. Cause like as a healer, I've got Barbara right here. I don't need another one. I mean, maybe I do, I would like another one, but I don't need another hydro healer. Give me someone else or something. I don't know. Lisa, the thirst queen herself. Uh, I think I'll put her like high in the middle, like either here or here, maybe like low here. I'm not sure. She seems the most mysterious to me as a character. Like, we already know she has a lot to do in Sumeru, and we know that she's going to get some more love in this patch. Like, she seems fun, and she does seem interesting. It seems interesting for a gameplay perspective that MiHoYo put, like, the most thirsty character in the beginning of the game. Like, it seems like such, like, a bait. It's very interesting. I don't know, at least, at least from my perspective. But I, she did really teach me that Catalysts are really fun to use. Like when I first played her, she was very fun to use. And I used her a lot in the early game just because of how interesting her moveset was. So she, she goes pretty high up. Like, and her like design is very cool in my opinion. Mona. Okay, so about Mona. For the longest time, I was, did not like her design that much. Well, actually, no, I mean, her design is cool. But I thought like, oh, she's just probably just a boring character for the longest time until I actually met her and heard her talk. And I freaking love Mona so gosh dang much. Like, I do I love her more than this? I don't know, her either here or here. They're, they're like competing, but honestly, like I love Mona. It's just her sassiness and her voice, specifically her voice. Like once I heard her voice, <clears throat> She just, just hits perfectly. And it, I also know someone in real life who does sound a lot like her. So she does remind me of her a lot. And yeah, she's just super cool. She, I really do want to lose 50-50 and get her. I really do want to lose that and get her. And unfortunately, I keep getting characters who aren't her, but I do want to get her sometime. And I would like to actually use her on my team because she does seem very interesting as a character. Like she definitely seems to know much more than she lets on. And yeah, actually learning about her in the summer event, like she literally like, if I didn't have that event, she literally would be in B tier just because she just seems okay. 
But yeah, she's a super cool person, and I really love her a lot. Ningguan, I think she'll go somewhere down here. Either here or here. She kind of just hovers down here. Like, I love... The main thing about her is her appearance. Like, strong yellow. Not a lot of characters have a strong yellow. And not many can actually pull off a yellow. But she does. Like, her, like, the way she carries herself and her voice a lot really shows, like, the history and power she has in society. Power in battle? Mm. Um, that's another story. <laughs> She's really cool. I love her design a lot. Just wish she was stronger. She just has like very cool energy to her. To her. And yeah, she's just really awesome. Good old Noelle. We love Noelle. She, she's a nice little sweetie. We don't see her enough, but we know she's in the back doing her best, trying to get that Knights of Favonia thing. She's a little nicey right there. But yeah, I think she's still like the only like hangout I've actually done. I do need to actually do the rest of the hangout. So many of these four stars might switch around once I get to actually hang out with them. But she's a, she's a little nice one. I do like her a lot. But yeah, and as a shielder, she did help me a lot in the early game as well. So pretty cool. Let's see. Chi Chi. Hmm. We all know Chi Chi. She's going right next to Kaching right here. Why is she a zombie? Why does she need to be a zombie? Second, why does she need to be a child zombie? <laughs> that makes it even worse. And why is her power healing? Why? Like I, and her speaking style is like funny, but why is she there? She doesn't need to be in this game. She doesn't need to run a pharmacy with Baiju. That could, Baiju could just be there and Chi Chi couldn't, doesn't even need to be in the game. Like, what? what's her purpose? I don't get it. <laughs> also, there's always the joke about people getting Chi Chi, like the worst of the five stars they could get. Like, honestly, if I got her, I wouldn't be too mad because I would like some more healers. But why does she also have like a, what does she use? Does she use a sword or a, or like a club? I, I don't even know what weapon she uses. But why, why does she even need to be there? Why is she a child? <laughs> it's creepy. Why is she, <laughs> but. Yeah, that's why Chi Chi's at the bottom. Let's see, Razor, also very, very low. I think I'm gonna put him like, eh, I, I think I'll put him like right down here. Either here or here. But Razor, like, uh, to his credit, he has helped me a lot in the early game as like actual DPS and electro DPS. He has helped me clear multiple things with his power. But other than that, he's just there, he's just, I am Wolf Boy. I am One Note Wolf Boy. I am, uh, he's, he's the Ikuto from Digimon F Savers, for those who understand that reference. But that's it. He's a Wolf Boy. Like, it was nice to learn a little bit more about his family in the latest event, but we didn't really learn to that much. I was expecting, like, actual plot revelations, but nope, he just kind of touch upon it a little bit. But yeah, that's about it. He's a Wolf Boy. At, at least he has friends. That's nice. But, and he has helped me a lot, but pretty much everything, everything Razor does, Sino does better. <laughs> so, hold on, let me put him back here. But yeah, <laughs> Man, that, that's Razor for you. Rosaria though, right to the top. Love Rosaria so much. She has helped me do so much in the early game. Her skills are so cool, so helpful. I literally just got the coolest personality in the game. Hair color, awesome. Her spiel about being like a, a nun who doesn't care about being a nun super metal love her so much she's helped me do so many battles and i should honestly use her more and more teams super cool design love her so much very very cool character love rosaria so much kujo sara is also cool but i wish she was stronger i'm not sure where to put her i think i'm gonna put her like right down here or so sara is like this like boss boss girl who basically is like the police of this game who's literally always like watching you to make sure you don't do bad stuff. Kujasara is cool. She's also a cancer, so I know she's got her own demons inside her too. I wish they focused more on her like bird side of her, but you don't really see that. And I feel like there's a lot more to her than meets the eye as like this hard, like serious person. There, there's gotta be some good in her there too. And now that I actually have her C6 and I can actually use her in a team, so, so much more fun to play around with in Mess Riv. And as a bow user, it helps me solve a lot of puzzles too. Okay, Sayu. 
Now, I have been downing on the other child characters so far, but I actually really like Sayu a lot. Uh, where, where can I put her? I think I'm gonna put her, like, no, maybe right here, honestly. Because Sayu, like, as a fellow insomniac, she... I relate to her so much. As someone who's always wants sleep so much, and who literally can spin dash, like, like the, once I learned she could spin dash, I knew she had to be on the top for me. I literally use her so much for exploration. It's like no contest so far. And just being able to like spin dash ram into enemies is so satisfying. Like I wish I could actually use the spin dash sound effects, but she helps me a lot. And, Mo, and I do want to build her more in the future so I can utilize her as a healer as well. But I like Sayu. I don't really know why she's there. Like she doesn't really need to be in this game, but but she, she's a nice little cutie, and I, I appreciate that. shun -hu. shun -hu. Now, probably like the, the most, how do I word this? Probably the most attractive character in the game, probably. Like, MiHoYo went all out on making shun -hu as like perfect, perfection as possible. Now, I wish he was a better character, personally. Like, stronger, I mean. Did, did I move him from here to here? Yeah, I think I did, but, but I wish he was better, like, in the future, I would like to wish for her, but knowing that she isn't going to be like a huge boost kind of like pushes me against it. It would be mainly for just like aesthetics, personally. Like she just looks amazing. And her relationship with her, um, not relationship, her connection, her family connection to Chongi is pretty cool, pun intended. But her story is nice. I do like now that we have a little bit of a family with Ganyu, Shinha, and the Cloud Retainer. That's fun. That's fun stuff to think about. But yeah, Shinha's Shen nice, I guess. Doesn't doesn't like have any problems. The idea of her being like a serial killer murderer is pretty fun <laughs> to think about. That might be fun to play with once we get access to her. The Raiden Shogun herself. Hmm. You know, I think I originally was gonna put her at the top S tier because she has helped me a lot with, like she was my first like real five star. And we got our C2 and she is just cutting every single thing in half, destroying enemies before I can even start up with them. Uh, she is amazing, but her actual like character and story, like it's, it's a little weird to discuss because you're technically dealing with two people and that's confusing, but she is fun. She has helped me a lot. Her design is very cool, but, and her like aggressive demeanor when you fight her as like an actual boss is awesome. Literally fighting a god. And she feels like you're actually playing as a god too. Now, if only they made her even stronger. Like if we could use all of her actual powers, like this game would be a cakewalk. But yeah, she's great. I just wish she was like a little, I don't know, a little bit more personable in the game, like both sides of her were, I don't, I don't know. Toma, the male wife, will go uh, down here, I guess. He, Toma doesn't really have a purpose. He's a schmoozer. He's like the silly mischievous schmoozer guy. That's about it. I am a little unhappy that I keep getting him in my polls, even when he's not featured on the banners. He just keeps showing up like, hey, it's me. Want to use me? I'm here. Like, I get, he's a fire shielder. And if he was good, I would use him all the time. But since he's not very good, I don't really use him that much. Toma, not a big fan of. Really is just kind of there. I wish he was stronger. His voice lines are pretty fun though. Yeah, we have Venti. I think Venti's gonna be right up here in like the top middle for now. Cause like, I like his design. It's very, very funky, very out there, very distinguishable as a mascot. Very well made. He's got a re really nice voice. I think I think he shares the same voice as On from Persona 5. And you can't tell that like at all. It's honestly pretty impressive. Venti's nice. We know he's obviously hiding secrets from us. And and his his little quirks is funny. Like I really loved him during the summer event last year. It was very very, very silly. I had a lot of fun with him. And he, he's just a interesting guy. And you can tell, like, he, like, ha puts pride in what he do. He does care about Mondstadt and his citizens. He does really care about everyone, which is nice, because, like, not the, other Arch not the other Archons really care too much. Or at least put the heart into it. 
So I do like Venti a lot. Like he does also just have this irresponsibility, which I'm not a big fan of. So that's why he doesn't get any higher. Like he is still good. He's still a good character. John Ling. John Ling has helped me so much in the early game. I think she's gonna go like, what, right in the middle here or so? She could just be S, honestly. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna put her at S. John Ling has been really good, really strong. Her Guoba learning about Guoba and all that during the event was really nice. She's really fun cook, almost too good of a cook in my opinion. If she's, if she does have a flaw, it's, it's, that she's too good of a cook. Like we learned like in the event that she really easily like destroyed Smiley at cooking. And I was like, ah, eh, like we know she's good. She doesn't need to win everything. Sean Ling's great, nice character, and sweet little design. And yeah, she helped me a lot in her early game. And she legit is still like, She's like my number two pyro character after Bennett. So she like puts in the work. Xiao. Oh, uh, where, where can I put Xiao? I don't really know where to put him. I guess I'll put him like right here. He doesn't really like offend me in any way. Maybe he's just in like the average. And uh, put, put him like right here. Like we don't really need Zhao for a lot of things. Like there's probably a lot of story to him that I just haven't met yet. So I really don't know too much about him. I know people love this guy so the heck much. And I do love his voice actor and their kazoo. That, that's pretty cute. That's pretty fun. But I don't really need to know too much about him. Like he's just, he's just there. He's just, ugh. I'm a brutal guy who loves the traveler so much. Ah. He's so cool all the time, but I'm cooler. I'm a tofu, and that's pretty funny. But other than that, he's just kind of there. So you know what? Maybe I'll put him a little higher. Maybe I'll put him like more than Albedo. Like he's fine. I just don't like adore him or anything. Let's see, Sting Show. Mm. Okay, but like maybe I could put him like low here. Like, Sink Sancho, like, does a job done, but he really doesn't help that much. Like, I don't really get his personality that much. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll mark, mark him down down here. Like, he has literally saved my rear so many times as, like, my actual hydro damage dealer, but I don't get his story. Like, he reads books? He writes books? Is that his personality? He's, like, a hero person in his mind? Is that your personality? That's it? <laughs> I know pl plenty of people who do that. <laughs> How does that make you special besides just having cool pi hydro characters? And you're also a political figure, I guess? That's it. I mean, he still helps me a ton though, so that's why he's up there. Sinyan! Thanks to Sinyan! Yeah! Woohoo! Sinyan's nice, but I don't need her too much. I, I guess I'll put her like right around here or so. Like, I like how Texas she is, but she really doesn't need to be here. I, I do like seeing her hair down in the um, summer event. That's pretty cool. Her hairstyle is unique, but she just, I don't know. We haven't seen too much of her yet. We only really see her in like specific events, but she is not that strong. Like people have been saying she's the worst four star in the game just because her stats are all over the place. And it makes me so sad. Because I love, okay, maybe she goes a little higher because I love the design of her attacks. That is metal as heck using an actual guitar. It's awesome, but it disappoints me so much that she is not strong. Like she could have been the best character in the game if they just made, she could have been easily top tier if her attacks were usable. Like even at Yanfei level, like I'd be, ah, maybe, maybe I'll use her a little bit. But the fact that she's not usable that good makes me so sad. I, I please, I hope to goodness that Mihoyo buffs some of their earlier characters. Cause then that would make, cause honestly it's a win-win. Like people will be happy to use her more and people get more, she, they get more money for um, more people pulling for her. Like it's a win-win. Just make your characters better. Like I'm not saying they need to be top tier. They just need to be usable. Yai Miko. She creeps me the heck out. So, so I think she goes right next to D. Luke because sheesh, she creeps me out. Like I know people like her, but I don't know. She's just too creepy for me. And the fact that we, you can't really trust her. It's not fun playing as a tr untrustworthy character, at least for me. Some people love that stuff. 
but not for me. And y you just never feel like you're in control of the conversation. Like maybe you and her, you can't really control her either because she's so sluggish. Like we want a fast catalyst, not a slow catalyst. So yeah, she goes right down there at the bottom for me. Like her pink hair is cool. Like her design is okay-ish. I just wish they went kind of like all out with her because she's kind of still reserved in a sense. Join me, uh, also not a big fan <laughs> at all. I think y'all put her like right down here, either here or over here. I think I'll put her like right down here. I don't know why she's there. Oh, okay. Well, I get she, she's the fireworks people and fireworks are cool in Japan. I don't get what her personality is. Her personality is she talks fast and she cares about kids. That That's it. Like, if she's trying to be like a mom figure, she doesn't seem like a mom figure because she's so young. Or, I, I don't get it from her. Like, I don't get her story too much, her personality. And she also is not that strong. Like, if she was stronger, I might have more to say about her, but she really isn't that good. And again, why is it all Pyro characters? I don't know. I don't know why there's so many Pyro, pyro characters so right there, so, but. I don't know, that's just how it is. Yeah, I just wish Yoi Mia was good and usable. And I'm, her design could have been super duper awesome, but it's just missing a mark for me. So Yoi Mia really just doesn't do it for me. Yunjin, however, A plus design. Love her design so much. So dang cool. I don't know where to put her on here. I think I'm gonna put her like right here. I don't know. I can imagine like going into a store and seeing a Yunjin figurine. She looks so cool. There's so much history and design and thought put into Yunjin. Like, not, not a lot of people appreciate. As someone Chinese, and even though I haven't gone to a Chinese opera, I can recognize seeing my representation put headfirst into a character. And that's super awesome. Even though I don't, I haven't used Yunjin, I would like to use her. She does seem cool. But her, everything about her just screams like, thoughts and carefully putting in the time and energy into making her as like representative as a character as possible in my opinion like she's so much more distinct than all the other characters and that makes her stand out but yeah i just i just love her design so much i wish we once we get more of her backstory once we get to her um hangouts i bet i'm gonna love her even more but she's just great she is just really really good Ah, Traveler, Jean Lee, one of the best instantly. I don't know where to put him. I guess I could put him even higher. But do I love more than Kazaha though? I don't know. I, I think Jean Lee stands good right at the top right here. He's literally just the most chill dude. He's literally the walking encyclopedia, the calming, chill historian who knows so much about everything. Ah, Traveler. Would we care for some osmanthus wine, which tastes the same as I remember? Traveler, let me tell you about 28,000 different kinds of rocks at once, and I'll soothe you to bed. Traveler, it feels like gold every day I'm with you. And a lot of it is just a voice actor. Such a good job, that voice actor. I forget his name, but such a such a cool one. And he has helped me so much. Like whenever I'm having too much trouble, it's Jean Lee time. Bring up the shield and I'm able to take most things okay, except for the occasional child. But yeah, I haven't heard of anyone who doesn't like Jean Lee. Like I thought like, like literally when I was going through the game and I was like, who is the second Archon? And then I found out it was this guy. I was like, whoa, really? I thought it was just a dude. Like, I didn't even like put two and two together. Like, I knew who Venti was. I knew who Raiden was, but I was like, who is the Geo Archon? It's like, oh, it's just this guy. This just lost man, but pretty fun, pretty fun. Ayato. Let's see, I think I'm gonna put him like somewhere in the middle here. Ayato, like, I think they made him too pretty. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, that, that doesn't make sense, but he seems almost like too pretty, like, he, I feel like they made him too good of a character. Like, he's like this important, always working businessman who is incredibly gorgeous, likes Boba, plays games. I think they made him too good of a character. And he's too pretty in a sense. Like, almost like too dreamy. Like, no one is ever going to compare to this man in general. So I don't really know what to think about him. He's kind of just 
in the middle. I, I guess he is pretty good. I haven't used him too much, but when I have used him, he is interesting to use. But yeah, it is funny that I Ayaka is actually the not pretty one compared to Ayato, at least from what I've heard, even though they're both gorgeous looking. But I, I don't know. He, he's there. He's fine. I don't know. I think maybe he was overhyped. Kuki. I don't know why there's two Kukis, but there's two Kukis here. So I don't really know where to put her because I haven't met her yet. I have a feeling she's going to go up once I get to learn her some more. So I think I'm also going to put them around the middle. Maybe like here for now. I did hear she got a really, really big buff once Dendro came out. So I am really interested to learn more about her and actually use her if I actually get her sometimes in a Dendro team, because that's definitely going to be a lot of fun. From what I know, Kuki is like fine. She is the responsible one. She helps Ito a lot, keeps stuff in check. So Yelan, Yelan. So I haven't actually met her in game yet. I've only seen clips I, I don't know her story she seems very like aggressively attractive <laughs> that, that's a, that's a word i can use because it seems like they the is like pushing like hard like yes thirst over this character you ch children you thirsty people who play this game i have disposable income thirst over her i say make that fan art <laughs> i'm the way <laughs> So, yeah, I feel like it's aggressive. They made her aggressively attractive, at least in the videos I've seen, which personally, which might be to her detriment. She does seem really useful in game, though, from what I've seen. And I do kind of hope I do get to see one of her because her speed skills, like if she didn't have like good skills, I feel like she'd be much more in the middle for me. But apparently, since she's literally one of the best characters in the game, she kind of has to be a little higher for me. So I, I guess, do I want to put her here or here? I'm not really sure. And I guess I'll put her, I could put her right ne right next to Sincho. I think I'll put her behind Venti for now. She'll probably go up way more once I actually get to use her some more. So, but yeah, that's, that's the so far. But yeah, tier list is going good so far. Look at how everything is. <laughs> it's very, very interesting. But yeah, it seems like all the characters I use often are much higher up, which makes sense. <laughs> Except for like maybe Singcho and I don't know. The characters I don't use anymore are just lower. That is a little sad. Oh, uh, let's see. Hey, is it Hazu or Baiju? Baiju, Hazu, Hazo. Hazo. I was not a big fan of him when, once I actually got to know, learn about him in the story. Like, he seems cool, but... It's just kind of bland in a sense. It's just kind of there. Nothing about him screams like, I want to get this character. Like I have him and I love that he literally just punches stuff. But the fact that he's also an animo um, catalyst means like, eh, that takes away from Sucrose. And I also not a huge fan of that. So I kind of have to give him marks for that. So I think I'm going to put him somewhere in the B tier for me. Like I do like that he punches stuff. So yeah, I'll put him right behind Xiao for now. Let's see, dang, now we are finally up to the modern era. We are finally up to Sumeru. Kale, love Kale so much. Easy, one of my favorite characters, easily. Because like her personality, like she, the idea of a character wanting to be like another character, is such a nice foil, such a nice idea. Cause she, she's literally just better, better Amber. Like, she literally is just more useful than her. And I just love how awkward she sounds. Like, she sounds like a person, like an actual person you know. And I well, I haven't read her entire story from the manga. What I do know makes me so much more proud to use her. So much more happy to see her in game. So Kali is just really up there for me. I just love her a lot. I didn't think I would, but she is just great. She's just a great character. Dory, on the other hand straight to the trash <laughs> straight down there i think i'll put her like right down here she she incorporates a lot of what i don't like about this game like okay first off i do love her voice actor voice actor good voice actor everything else not good first off dressing up is as a belly dancer as a child very creepy very low i like very lolly like um third why is she a child why can't she just be an adult fourth um what was the other one i was, had to say the fourth uh why in sumeru why is she not darker skinned why can't she be darker skinned 
Like, why is she super duper light skin? Not cool. Why did she have to be that? Next, she's not good in battle. Why couldn't they make her usable in battle? I don't know. Her skill could have been like making a ton of money. She could just be the money making character that helps you make Mora when you need more Mora. But no, they just make her not cool, not usable. So she's literally what encapsulates everything I don't like about this game. So why would she not be all the way down at the bottom? And, and also I got her by accident. Well, I could have gotten any other four stars. So I'm also just salty about that too. The Traveler's right in the middle. Like I don't, we don't know about enough about them to have a straightforward opinion about them. So right in the middle, I don't really care about their design. Honestly, I don't like the main Traveler's design. Like, it, I don't know. The belly button throws me off for me. It just looks weird. Like his shirt's a little too small for him. And like, I don't know, the fact that he's more yellow than Lumine also throws me off. Like, shouldn't they both be a similar like white color? Maybe it's because I use Lumine so much. So that's probably why. Tignari. Okay, you know what? Earlier, like asking a month ago, I feel like he would have been definitely B tier. But after hearing some of his voice clips, he either pretty good guy. He's a pretty sassy guy. I kind of like him a lot more now. What are they gonna do? Lock me up? I dare them. Like he's literally, he's literally made me laugh. I literally can't get that out of my mind. He could have been dark skin. That's the main thing that holds him back, but it's just so funny. Like I literally can't stop saying like, what are they gonna do? Lock me up? I dare them. Like, it literally just makes my night every time I think about it. like I can't stop thinking about that thing quote. But yeah, he is he is usable. Char strong charge attacks gets the dendro round. And yeah, would like to learn him a little bit more. And I do have access to him if I do want to build him. Candice lover so much. Such a radical design. The only thing that could be better is if if she was more dark skinned. But other than that, Awesome, A plus design, really, really dang good. Super, super good. Yeah, I don't know too much about her. I wish she was better and I'll try to use her the best I can once I have access to her. But right now, uh, I hope she gets a buff. I really hope more of these characters get buffs. They need buffs. Please buff them, Mihoyo, please. Sino is literally just better Razor in like a hundred different ways. Literally Yu-Gi-Oh man. You know what? Maybe I should push some of these characters up a little bit more. So I think I'll put Singcho up to here. Sino is literally just better Razor in every way. Like the super cool, like Pharaoh based man who just plays card games and tries to tell jokes. How can you not like this guy? He tries so hard. He's like the knuckles of this game. And I just really like that. His personality is strong. Honestly, a lot of these Sumer characters are just a plus awesome. Like, I love them so much. They're really, really dang good. Nilo, where do you go? Using her in the team with Nahida seems amazing. Like literally the most fun I've had with a team in like forever. But the fact that I need Nahida for it kind of throws me off. That she seems like super duper fun to use but I don't want to have to invest so many gems to try to get her if she's so hard to use. And also there's a whole like skin, skin debate. Like why not make her skin color darker, please? I know you're a multi, um, glo you're a global game that needs to be okay with markets wanting light skin characters, but please make her darker skin. Please, I'd love, love to put her higher up, but I guess she's like in the middle for me. Like her discourse just makes me wish. But other than that, I also really don't get what her personality is yet. So maybe she goes lower. Maybe she goes down here of all things. Yeah. Layla, honestly, might be my second favorite after Sucrose. A literal insomniac, always sleepy, useful in battle. <laughs> so adorable, really great design. The only thing that really hangs her back is she could be darker skinned, but her voice actress is awesome. Love Layla so much. We literally have Layla emotes. She's just really, really good. I just really love Layla. I didn't think I would love her. The more I saw her and when I saw her in game, the more she grew on me. And she literally is the one four star I really want from this game. Like every time I pull now, I'm like, Please be Layla. I really want to use her. She seems so neat, so interesting. Nahida, ah, right down here. The main thing that holds her back is because she's a child. 
That's the main thing. It's just a little too icky for me. Everything else, she's apparently the most broken Dendro character in the game. Like, totally cool. But I don't think I want to pull for her. It's because I don't want to have to pull for a child. It's, it's just it's weird. I don't know. She's just a super duper smart person, baby. I don't know. It's weird. She's just kind of there for now. Like apparently she like literally destroys the game and might be the best character in the game, but that's about it for now. Farazan. Farazan? I don't, I don't know anything about her. I barely know what to do with her, so. I, I guess I'll put her down here like because nothing about her screams like I need to get this character. She's just kind of there. Obviously, once I meet her, she'll be much more useful and interesting. But the fact that you need all the copies of her to be use usable in the game, not good, not good in my eyes. So I guess she's Hatsune Miku. That's cool. Also, I'm not a fan of characters who look young but are supposedly super old. Not my thing. The Mooch! We love the Mooch. Scaramooch, Scaramooch, will you do the Fandango? I'm not sure where to put the Mooch. Like, earlier, like, he would have been much lower. But now that I've actually seen him in battle as this, like, reoccurring bad guy figure, he's kind of higher for me. Like, a little higher. I'm not sure where, though. You know, I think I'll switch... I'll switch the Mooch with him for now. Like, right around here. Like, very cool design. I love him as this literal, like, evil kid person that we've reformed. I just love the hat. I mainly just love the silly hat thing of his. And his power to, like, fly around. I would like to pull him eventually. He'll definitely come back at some point. I just don't know when. And the only thing pulling him back is that's another animal catalyst. Making Sucrose less, less unique. Al Hytham. Cool name, but that that's about it. <laughs> That's about it. I don't know too much about him. People thirst about him a lot. I know Steph is in love with this guy, but th that's about it. He's just kind of there. Actually, you know, I think I'm putting him higher. I think I like him like more like here. Like I respect him as a character, but I don't know what, how I'm gonna use him. And again, he's not also not out yet. So I also can't really judge him based on what he could be. So I don't know, maybe he's awesome. Maybe he's not awesome. We'll find out in like, Five, less than a week. So things might change, but he, he's probably gonna be around there. Unless he's broken, maybe he'll go up. I don't know. Right. Last but not least, the one, the mysterious character everyone's been thinking about, Yow Yow. I originally thought she'd be much lower, but I don't know, her design grew on me a lot. Like just the bells, just, and all the money like on her head, I really, I don't know, she, her design grew on me. Like again, child, not a fan of child and having to take care of another kid. But you know, her, her design grew on me a little bit. So I think I'll put her a little higher up. Um, like maybe in the middle. It's like maybe low in the middle for me. And again, I also don't know how to use her yet. Maybe she's amazing. I'll probably get her for free in the next event. So things will change around. And that, my friends, is the Genshin tier list.
That is my Genshin character tier list. These are, have all been my opinions. Please do not fight me too much for it. And we'll definitely revisit this once more of the, probably once next year, once all the Sumeru characters come out, not Sumeru, Fontaine characters come out because I have a feeling they might be, they might definitely shake up my list a little bit. But yeah, there it is, the Genshin tier list.